As we continue our discussion on chemistry, specifically chemical bonds seen within biology, we're going to entitle this next flowchart Chemical Bonds 2. In our previous chemical bonds video and flowchart, we looked at covalent bonds and ionic bonds, and we saw their sort of relationship in terms of how they're related to electronegativity and how chemical bonds create bond energy uh, or release bond energy dependent on what happens in terms of formation or breakage. So chemical bonds too is all about one type of bond and a very important type of bond. It's called the hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bonds are the reason why water has its properties. And before we get into those properties of water, we want to look at some basics in terms of hydrogen bonds. So hydrogen bonds uh, involve hydrogen and what we call an electronegative atom, usually something like oxygen or nitrogen. Those are electronegative atoms. Hydrogen, an electronegative atom, gives us a hydrogen bond. How does it do this? What happens is you have hydrogen, which is going to get what is known as a partial positive. That's the sign. This sign right here, this sort of wiggly S, gives us a sign that's known as po partial positive charge. Whereas the other guy in this situation, which would be oxygen, let's say, what do you think it's going to get? Partial negative charge. Talk about that a little bit later. Another thing you want to know about the hydrogen bond is that it's not as strong as uh, a covalent bond, not as strong as covalent. Remember covalent bond was that covalence shells, the shells are being shared, the electrons, excuse me, are being shared within the shells. So what happens here is not that situation, but actually these are still strong, but they're only strong in unison. What do I mean by this? If you, we have lots of, let's say, water, write that over, lots of water, what do you think that means? How many bonds of hydrogen are we going to have? Because water is represented like this, if we have lots of these molecules, remember H2O is a molecule, two or more atoms in a fixed ratio, if we have lots of these molecules, we're going to have a strong overall force. We're going to have a strong overall bond because there's going to be tons of these acting together. And these in unison give us a very strong bond. Whereas a covalent bond, something like C bonded to H four times like this, all you need is one of these and you'll have a strong covalent bond. With hydrogen and oxygen giving us water, we need many of them. So let me just give back some space here. What we now notice also about this is that hydrogen bonds involve obviously H2O molecules, but more specifically, these H2O molecules that use H bonds, another way to say hydrogen bonds, they usually try to assume or get to four bonds. This H2O molecule will try to find three other H2O molecules to give us a four bond sort of chunk, a four bond um, hydrogen uh, connection, let's say. We would always want this because this gives us a much stronger overall force, a much stronger overall bond. Because remember this idea of unison, acting in unison. This is going to now, this basis, this background, gives us the ability to look at what are known as the emergent, there's that word again, emergent, remember, observations, a bunch of observations, creating generalizations, emergent, H2O properties. These are entirely due to these characteristics right here, these characteristics of hydrogen bonds. What are some of these properties? A couple of these properties include the idea of adhesion and also its cousin, its partner, cohesion. Put these together, add them together. Adhesion and cohesion. Adhesion is when water sticks to other stuff. Very scientific terminology, I know, but it's just simple to understand. Water sticks to other stuff. What do I mean by other stuff? Things that aren't water. Cohesion, notice the word co, co meaning with, together, as one. 
cohesion involves water sticking to itself. So water sticks to itself. And both of these combine to give us a very important property of water known as capillary action. Capillary action is this amazing ability of water to rise. But specifically, water actually has this ability to rise, or water rises through, let's say, a, gla a, a glass tube even. Uh, water rises through a tube against gravity. So if you take a glass tube, a very thin glass tube, and you put it next to a drop of water, what's going to happen is without any sort of suction force whatsoever, because of adhesion, the water sticking to what? Not the water, but the glass of that tube, and cohesion, the water sticking to itself, forming that droplet, that droplet is going to get sucked up into that glass tube. That's called capillary action. It's a very cool part of the emergence emergent property of water. So, cohesion, another thing I just want to mention about cohesion is that it also creates surface tension. Water sticking to itself creates surface tension. This is what allows something like a fly or a mosquito to stay and land on water because the water is cohesive. It's connected to each other. It's creating that surface tension that the fly or insect or mosquito or what have you may be able to land on. So, another property of water that I want to talk about is this ability for it to maintain temperature. It maintains temperature. What does that mean? Maintains temperature basically talks about the idea that water has a high specific heat and it also has a high heat of vaporization. Two very technical sounding terms but all you really need to know about this is that high specific heat and high heat of vaporization allows water to absorb. Water absorbs lots of energy without changing its temperature. Okay, It absorbs lots of, let's say, high energy even without drastically changing its temperature. This is very important because this allows a concept known as evaporative cooling you are very familiar with evaporative cooling. How are you very familiar with it? Because evaporative cooling is what allows you or what gives you the ability to sweat. This is sweating. This is cooling off because water can have the ability to absorb lots of high energy because it maintains its temperature, because it has these emergent H2O properties because of hydrogen bonds. Notice how we just built up this hierarchy using this flowchart format, something you should definitely get used to. Another emergent property of water is this ability of ice floats. Why does ice float? Because it's dense. Ice floats because it's dense. What do I mean by this? If we look at liquid versus ice, we'll notice two numbers. 15% for liquid and 100% for ice. What do I mean by this? 15% of the H2O molecules in liquid are bonded to four others. Remember that four other bond max that we have? This is what we want. This is what water has the ability to do, let's say. Not want, but more so has the ability to do. Ice, on the other hand, has 100% of every molecule densely packed next to each other because guess what? It has four bonds. It's bonded with four other H2Os at every single point. That's what allows ice to float. And the last two things we want to talk about, some two terms you have to absolutely know in biology, are hydrophobic and hydrophilic. Let's break down this word very quickly. Hydro means what? Hydrogen. Yeah, but more so hydro means water in this situation. Hydro means water. Phobic, phobia. Think of fears. Water fearing. Whereas philic, think of Philadelphia. Philadelphia is the city of brotherly love. Hydrophilic means water loving. So hydrophobic means that we have no affinity for who? For water. Uh, for water. We're sorry, squeezing this in. And hydrophilic means we have affinity for water. High affinity for water. What does this 
allow us to do. This allows us to figure out what types of things like hydrofo are hydrophobic and what types of things are hydrophilic. Things that are hydrophilic, don't have much room here, but I can just state them to you. Polar. I'm going to try to fit that in. Polar. Polar things are going to be hydrophilic. They're going to be water loving because polar likes polar. Water likes water. They like to interact with each other. Things that are polar will mix with polar things. Hydrophobic, on the other hand, is nonpolar, hates water. Something that's like oil and water don't mix because of the hydrophobic components behind that relationship. So overall, we now understand hydrogen bonds and their incredible relevance to us. Hydrogen bonds are formed between hydrogen and an electronegative atom. And this creates a partial positive and a partial negative charge. It's not as strong as a covalent bond, but together it's pretty strong. And there are four possible bonds that can happen in an H2O molecule. We have all these emerging properties of water that give us water's amazing ability to be adhesive and cohesive and give us capillary action and to maintain its temperature and to float on itself and to be either hydrophilic or hydrophobic with certain things. Overall, chemical bonds, hydrogen bonds, great way to understand how water works.